So I think I think it's being 502. Um, well, we don't have, let's see. So Mary hasn't joined, but the meeting is being recorded. So, so that's okay. All right. So it being 502 and we have aura for both of the committees, planning board and housing committee. Um, I'll call the planning board meeting to order um, at this time. And I guess, Catherine, you- And can likewise, be... the housing committee. And I'll okay. Think, yeah. Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. It will be exciting night. A couple of, um, uh, and, and uh, okay, so I don't think I'll, I don't think I should do anything. Any opening, we'll get really right into oh, good. it. Yeah, Monty's coming, nice. Oh, Monty's coming, very good. We- uh, Oh, give... house. Hey there, yeah. hey there, Monty. All right, very good. We just called the meeting to order. And so we're gonna get into it. Uh, all right, so- um, Can I ask first who's taking minutes? So- uh, the, That's a great question. For the plan. I think the way we do this, Judy, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, we, the as the sort of the host committee uh, or the planning board will take the minutes and there'll be joint minutes versus both of us taking separate minutes. I would think so. I actually was looking at this more like the housing committee was here on an informal basis and it was our meeting but you've okay. already called the housing committee meeting to order. So, I mean, um, we can we can post your minutes as our minutes. I don't expect yeah. that we'll be, if we need to do a vote, we can just have, yeah. ask your Mary to, to maybe kindly for us add a sentence if we actually do that. And then otherwise I was thinking we're, our regular meeting Fine. is next Wednesday anyway. So, you know, I was sort of thinking it might yeah. not be in a meeting where there was action, so we can just post it as a joint meeting, the minutes. There's certainly yeah. no need for two sets of minutes. No. Right. Your and presence Brian, is appreciated though. <laughs> yeah, Brian <laughs> had, um, Brian Domina had recommended that we do this as the a joint meeting with both committees hosting um, and having calls to order, but I think the, the common minutes is just fine. Okay. Um, so we're gonna spend some time focusing on possible zoning bylaws and bylaw changes regarding community housing for annual town meeting. And I wanna do a little bit of table setting and maybe describe how I'd like to see tonight's meeting unfold. First, for everyone on the planning board, um, as far as I know, and I don't know, Fred, if you have any new information, I don't see yet a date for annual town meeting in April posted on the town calendar. Uh, the tentative date, let me check, it's early June. Oh. oh. The moderator is not in town then. They got pushed. That's what Brian told me today. Right. Okay. Well, that's... Uh, if you give me a minute, I'll give you the tentative no, date. That's... that's... Everybody heaves a huge sigh of relief. Yeah, you just, you know, took a huge weight because of what I was about to say is we have certain hard deadlines to get through public hearings and so forth to make an April annual town meeting with anything. But now we the have- The tentative date is June 4th. June 4th, June 4th tentative, TM June 4th. All right, awesome. Well, still, um, the planning board, putting aside anything related to housing, we already have a, uh, we're teed up for a, uh, an item for a public hearing related to the aquifer protection overlay district, just to remind everyone. Um, we've previously voted and approved uh, changes to the aquifer protection overlay, uh, the aquifer protection district bylaw, the wording in the zoning bylaws. And we've also circulated two versions of a new zoning map. We approved a new a zoning map last town meeting that didn't change any of the boundaries of the overlay district for aquifers. Um, and we've now adjusted those boundaries. And we have a new map 
in draft form, circulated it to all the key stakeholders seeking feedback, but we have that in queue, if you will, to take to a public hearing. So, um, so sometime, if not in maybe February, March or April, we have now more running room to line up a, a public hearing to at least consider that. That's basically ready to go. Um, and we can, we can come back at the end of tonight's meeting if anyone has any comments or questions about that. But I just wanted to set that stage. The thing that maybe, Grant, maybe they don't realize is any bylaw change that goes on the warrant has to have a public hearing before, before that happens. Correct. I was assuming that for the cognoscenti, but I, I shouldn't. Um, yes. Yeah, so anything, even the the bylaw changes that we're starting to talk, or we're continuing to talk about this evening, uh, will have to go before a public, go through a public hearing with proper notice uh, before we can then, and I, and again, I'm sort of getting in my new chair job, catching up on the details of the process. And then I understand, Judy, that once we, for any given bylaw, change we take it through a public hearing at that public hearing if we we the board vote to approve it we still then write this up as a recommendation that we forward to the select board and it's the select board's decision as to whether it goes on the warrant is that the correct procedure judy that's the correct procedure i think it's would be very unusual to have the select board not take it to town meeting, but um, sure. it's never okay. happened in my time on the board. Yeah. But there's Megan always that there. possibility, right? Sure, but but we send forward the recommendation to the select board, which affects our timing, right? We have to complete yes. the public hearing in enough time to prepare the recommendation letter, get it to the select board before one of their meetings. And then the select board has to somewhere in there town council has to review it and then the select board has to allow two weeks for posting minimum of two weeks for posting right the minimum of two weeks for meeting. posting of the warrants for town meeting so you you're back you, you keep backing up this is sure the... so doing the calendar math um if the annual town meeting stays around at June 4th, the beginning of June, um, is it reasonable to think that the latest we could have a public hearing is approximately the end of April? Yeah, and that's cutting it pretty tight, I would think. Yeah. Like we might, again, if we end wanted, of March would be a lot more comfortable in middle of April would be comfortable. Okay. So anywhere from the, let's just say, anywhere from the end of March to the middle of April, which would be an ad hoc meeting. I mean, we were at one point trying to think about having a public hearing on the same date as a regularly scheduled uh, planning board meeting, the last Wednesday of a month, though it's not necessary. Um, so we had a little bit more running room, but not a huge amount more, like maybe an extra month, month and a half. Because I think we were thinking latest was going to be about end of February. Okay, so that's the context. So now what I'd like to do, we've been we've been talking about, and Judy has done us a great service by drafting some um, some bylaw revisions and some bylaw change suggestions. So what I was thinking we would do, and I'm going to try to be mindful of the time, that we go through each one and maybe try to focus on just Q&A for maybe 15-ish, 20 minutes each at most on just trying to make sure we understand what the proposal is and if there are any questions and basically try to get through all the possible housing related bylaw changes that we might consider taking to a public hearing. Just make sure we understand them 
And then we can have a discussion about which ones we feel we would like, we would recommend taking, going further with versus not rejecting, but perhaps tabling for um, more extended deliberation and not targeting for this year's annual town meeting. All right, so that's kind one, of way. One other piece for the housing committee is that the select board do not want zoning bylaw changes at special town meetings because they feel quite rightly that not, not enough people come. So postponing means a year. That's right. Okay. So the, um, I think what we'll do first, if you're okay with this, Judy, you being having the authorship, is why don't we take up the draft community housing bylaw. And so we'll start with that. And I will share the draft on this, my screen so that people can see it. Um, and then, and Judy, you've of course circulated comments about it, but I give you the floor to set any context or any summary of this proposed bylaw change, and then we can do some Q&A on it, okay? Okay. There are two uh, factors that led me to come up with this. The first was a conversation I had with Catherine well, more than a year ago. She had a question, a zoning question. There was a person in town who was had an undeveloped parcel and was interested in putting a house on it for herself with another affordable unit for someone else, obviously. And we looked at the zoning and the parcel is small and it, it's a non, non-compliant lot even for one house. And we talked about it and I said, we agreed this would be a nice opportunity maybe for a friendly 40B, which I'm gonna assume is something you all know about. Um, and we talked a little bit about how that might be something that the housing committee want, might wanna look at is finding lots that were otherwise undevelopable and thinking about could they be used for affordable housing with a friendly 40B. The other was the historic building reuse bylaw that actually relaxed the dimensions for the buildings that were considered significant. Um, that was passed a couple of years ago and it's been quite successful, at least conceptually. We have a buyer for the center school with a project underway and two RFPs for the, I, I'm sorry, for the East school and two RFPs for the center school. So I thought, well, wait a minute here. Do we need a friendly 40B? Why don't we write a bylaw that essentially does the same things that a friendly 40B would do, but gives us some, us the town, some oversight uh, via special permits and site plan review. Whereas a 40B, there would be none of that. So that's what this tries to do. Um, and the reason now is that I think it's quite likely to pass because in essence, it doesn't give anyone any authority that they don't already have. Um, but it does give the town more control. And I think it would actually be more attractive to developers than a 40B, which is kind of an onerous process. So, so that's it. Um, the idea is a lot that would presumably not be developable for a project of the size that's being considered or um, one with more units than the typical bylaws would have, as long as at least 25% of the units qualify for a permanent affordable housing. And that's basically it. Could we, um, well, let's see, maybe I'll just 
open the floor to comments and questions. I think I've got all of the relevant piece, except for the bit about the table of use. So this new bylaw, um, community housing would be a new principal use allowed by special permit with site plan review in AR1, AR2 in the commercial district and not allowed in commercial industrial and not allowed in industrial. So do people have comments or questions about the wording in the bylaw that you see on your screen? I'll just- I, I have some questions. Go for it, JD. Um, in terms of the 25%, how is that enforced? How is it, like if we have, um, a property manager running it, but an absentee owner that owns it, who's administering it, who's, how do we know this is gonna, and our best intentions right now are gonna be followed for the next five, 10, 20 years that this is gonna be doing, who, who's tracking all this? Are they submitting annual reports to the housing committee? Um, we would we have to, yeah, I can answer that, JD. Sorry, okay. hi, I'm Catherine, yep. I'm on the housing committee. Uh, and I worked in the affordable housing industry as a finance okay. director for a small agency that builds housing in the Hilltowns yeah. for yeah. about 16 years. So um, my proposal or thought around, should we actually get to the point when we actually get to the point where we have a project in town where there's some interest in something being affordable, yeah. someone will have to oversee that that has some authority and other similar experience. So um, the agency in Franklin County that oversees most of the affordable housing projects and is used to going by mm -hmm. uh, what goes on the, the SHI and adheres does like, we'll have more than one staff on hand who does income verifications and you have to do those certifications every year for a tenant um, would be the Franklin County Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Okay. Um, and uh, we are familiar with them and um, would before construction probably even be working with them to make sure that they were also supporting us with any of the fair housing requirements, the advertising, all the things are a whole different, completely are different they, if you include are affordable they getting, housing. In the, are, they getting, are they getting development funds to follow this? Because they will I have to, we will, yeah. They, we will the, have the to are... come up with a funding mechanism, but the CPA fund has yeah. money also. And, and so we might be able to put some town resources that aren't, resources from the developer into actually making something like that work. So like, say, like to, my, yeah. say like my neighbor buys a house yeah. that has a restriction on it. Someone else did went through all this process five years from now. You yeah. know what? I'm going to turn it into something else. My kids are going to live here. I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. If it's private property. Is there any teeth to this? To Yeah. That we would have to have, have to have a deed restriction. You'd have to have a deed restriction. Okay. You wouldn't, and it would be permanent is my and, understanding. And who reading enforces rate that? Duty? I'm just yeah, playing devil's permanent and, and the, um, as Catherine said, the, the housing development authority enforces it. Okay. Okay. And they wouldn't be able to transfer the property because of the deed restriction without uh, going through another agency, right? Like if they wanted to actually transfer the property to their kids, yeah. I don't think an attorney could even do that without the involvement of the housing authority because of the affordable restriction on it. Okay. Um, yeah. Paragraph A stipulates specifically that it has to be recorded. Restriction has to be recorded. Okay. The other comment that I had was that yeah. I just, personally don't agree with the density limit and the aquifer protection overlay district it's because my houses don't pollute. Um, I'm more concerned about the road salt from the town trucks going by. And I don't see how adding a little accessory structure or something in the aquifer protection district is protecting the aquifer. I just, I see it as very restrictive. I, I personally, I don't see it, but everyone's open I, to a, opinion. I think JD, we've agreed to look at that for next year's zoning but but um one reason that that's here in this specifically is because one of the exceptions to 40b is yep. for health and safety so okay. to be consistent with the 40b restrictions yeah that's here i think also 
it might be more difficult to get past the town meeting without it. I understand. Okay. Another point that I brought up to Brant the other day, and I don't know if this is on, on from a state level, is there going to be any easing of Title V restrictions? Um, the minimum septic design right now was for a three-bedroom house, and it requires a large leach field, large areas of land. Are they going to allow us to have multiple houses tied into one septic system? Are they going to, if we're going to build a little, if we're a little one-bedroom house, will they let us put a one-bedroom septic in? Is that even cons being considered on a state level? I think you're outside our territory. <laughs> I mean, but that's, if right I now, think... Title V is really controlling our development because people can't put in a large house and stuff or a lot of bedrooms because Title V is going to restrict that. So if Title V rules get relaxed significantly, not and just the, the sizing of them, not if they allow us to do a septic for a one bedroom instead of a three bedroom minimum, they're going to get smaller. We're going to have a lot more projects in front of us, a lot more development. I can so. speak to that a little bit. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Megan Rhodes from the COG. Yeah. Um, I've been talking with our board of the, the um, Spring County uh, inspectors about this topic. And um, their understanding is that the state at this point in time is not willing to do that at all. Okay. Um, but I, I th they think there's room for flexibility and in interpretation of the rules. Okay. And so we're going to, at least the COG is going to start exploring how to do that okay. uh, these couple of years. I, right now, it's a huge limitation for us. The Megan, biggest, and I might well, have an affordable, sorry, go ahead. But the biggest might problem have an, lately for development is there's no municipal sewer system. That's the biggest hindrance right now. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. That's fine. Um, Megan, in Hampshire County, Hilltown did two projects, maybe three that I can think of right now, where we were able to do, um, oh, wait, let me think about the number of buildings. Are you going to talk about community septic? Yeah. Yeah. It also right. depends if it's a repair or a new installation as well. But yeah, right, 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 right. So it's true that the one that was multiple, like, eight buildings in total, but over two phases, that was a brand new septic and we built community septic. And there was, I don't, I did not participate in that process. And I know that there were lots of meetings, but I do not think that was one of the bumps. Okay. That is coming um, along. I, their, their community septic technology, everything has really advanced. And I think that the state has been more willing about that. Yeah. I, I was gonna actually kind of bring up community septic vis-a-vis -vis the aquifer protection lake. So so hold on. I do yeah. want to remind everyone we're focusing. I want to try to get us back on track. You know, there's a lot we can talk about related to this, but I want to stay really focused on this biological okay. draft and talk and find out, you know, questions about what it means, suggestions about changes in wording, and all the other conversations we can have, we can have a little bit later. Okay. Would I be able to finish my sentence and please, ask the question please. I was I going just, to? Go Super. So um, I also had a question like JD did about the Aquifer Protection Overlay District. And I, it, it, um, it's maybe for slightly different reasons, but if I could just get a little bit more explanation, Judy, you mentioned that you were thinking about taking that and taking a look at it next year. So would that mean potentially if, you look at the aquifer overlay, the district, that maybe if this passed this year, that maybe next year, if you thought there would be more room for flexibility, that then there could be a language change well, I to think that the piece in B? I think the flexibility would show up in the bylaw for the aquifer overlay district. I think what uh, JD thinks is that the the provisions there are overly restrictive given technology changes. Yeah. And and so if we change, I mean, this doesn't, so if we change the aquifer overlay district, then this would change automatically. Or right, the location. Right. Yeah, right. Probably, yeah. Judy, you're right, that the way this is written, no waiver of requirements is permitted. If we loosen the requirements in the, aquifer bylaw 
protection by law, then this that would follow automatically here. Um, other, JD, did you ask all your questions or raise all the points you had? I, to... Just the, the last line for H, we went over septic briefly, and is there possible to share water wells? Because there's setback differences for that. You have to have a separation from a septic to a well. If you have a lot without town water, could you share a well? Yeah. So again, I don't that... think there's anything in the zoning that would prohibit that. Yeah. We, we're just dealing with zoning here, J.D. Right. Yep. Yeah. Just trying to create more affordable housing. There's no wording in here that we could change that would make nope. a difference there. Okay. I guess Board of Health could put time in and relax yeah. some of their think, restrictions you know, I, to promote more housing. I'm a little reluctant to get into technicalities on water and septic in the zoning because technology changes so fast and changing the bylaws is a very slow thing and you have to be aware. Um, and I, th I think that's better left for other regulators. Right, Judy, my point was my, my point was that if you have a lot and you have to use, can, can set aside 30% of the areas for the septic, and the well setbacks and all that stuff. And all of a sudden that 30% becomes 15%, we can have a lot more development. Well, I think so we could see wording, undevelopable lots become developable lots. I think this is That's worded in a way that would let somebody like the Board of Health opine or, or the state opine on whether that 15% is adequate or not. Okay. I, I'm I'm good with what you have here. I, you did a good job. I I'm good. I, I have two comments. Go ahead, Fred. Okay. One is in uh I guess the first paragraph. Uh, the last sentence right above A. You say uh, appropriate for the site and character of Waitley. I guess I would like to see in there appropriate for the neighborhood. Something. Waitley character is rural. I, I mean. That doesn't tell me anything. We've got different neighborhoods, and uh -huh. it has to be, I would think, compatible with, with the neighborhood it's being proposed in, whether it's residential or in different types of residential, if it's commercial. Uh, would you, Fred, would you suggest changing site to neighborhood or adding neighborhood? Or what, site, how would, you, maybe, how would character, you do this? How, how about would you character do this? of Whiteley neighborhood? Um, Fred, if I might. What if someone wanted to build a very modern house in a, in a sea of ranches? Well, uh, that, I guess it could be open for discussion, I guess. I mean, everyone has their own castle, what they like. Do we need to restrict that other than it conforms to the bylaws for setbacks and so forth? What well, we might think... find nice or someone else might be really passionate about. Brad, yeah. maybe the thing for us to do tonight is to take suggestions and then come up with yeah. specific wording later. Okay. Rather than word, wordsmithing, what would, what would you think? Okay. The, yeah. I, the, the other good comment right. I have is on uh, C, C and D, uh, I think D maybe should be under C because I'm not sure maximum of 12 units Per what per lot and, and what is the what is the the lot is it the building lot or is it the parcel lot? There, there's a difference. A building lot is what forty thousand square feet. You're gonna put four four units on there and up to twelve units, or is it the parcel? The parcel can be you know ten acres, ten acre parcel that meets the building lot requirements, but you can put what twelve units on that bigger parcel. It, okay. To me, it's a little confusing. So, so change so, lot to parcel. Hold on. Uh, we actually have a definition of lot in the zoning bylaws. The okay. definition of lot is a parcel of land with definite boundaries described and recorded on a plan or deed in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds. All right. 
So that's what a lot is. When we use the word lot in the build, in at least we should when we're writing bylaws, when we use the word lot, we should mean lot as it's defined in the bylaws. Okay, but to me that doesn't sound like a building lot. That can be any a size. Lot, lot is a it's parcel not... of land. Yeah, parcel okay. of land can be any size, even smaller or bigger than a building lot. Yes, that's right. I think well, that's the intent Brad, of the language, right, Judy? Brad, think about the way these things are proposed. They come with a with a drawing that shows the lot line, right. the setbacks, the lot density, where where the septic is, all of that. So so you're talking about the lot as described in the proposal. Um, we can check with town council on the wording here. But so let's um, take that as a comment just to make sure we're using consistent mm -hmm. language and we understand the distinctions between building lots and parcels and we get that right. And we're right. not going to try to do that here and now. Other right. comments, Fred? Because you could have a small building lot, lot or meet some building requirements and you're allowed 12 units on it versus, like I say, one that's 10 acres big and, and the, the 12 units are, are adequate. Or look fine, I guess, or appear to be fine, but. Other comments, Fred? No, that's that's all that's good I have right now. Great, thank you. Um, Sarah, do you have any comments on this? And I'll always make sure every member of the board gets a chance to weigh in. Um, Monty or Fred Barron from the Housing Committee. Not at all. I think any issues I've had have been raised already. I don't have any questions. Okay. I I have a question, Judy. First of all, there's maybe I'll just note it seems like there's word or phrase missing here, just as a wordsmithing piece. Income afford in part A. Maybe it should be set forth in or but I think there's some some text missing there. I have a question really about B. Um, the fact that the, the way this reads that these dimensional and density limit requirements may be waived. Um, I one question was Waving seems like a black or white thing. It's either all on or all off. Is it, should we insert language to say that to include relaxing or does that matter? So I'm just gonna maybe put that out there as a, maybe a wording change. But the specific question for feedback from you, Judy, is seems very open-ended. And if we are the planning board and we're doing this, part B seems to give us quite a bit of latitude to just throw dimensional requirements aside. And I'm thinking like on what basis would we decide how much frontage to give up, how many, how much front side back, I, I haven't encountered this before. And I'd be curious for your thoughts if something like this came up before the board and we were contemplating waiving or relaxing dimensional and density limit requirements entirely at our own discretion, where would we, do we just deliberate and decide collectively where we draw well, those for one thing, For one thing, that's a ZBA concern, not a planning board concern. Um, these are all zoning requirements. Our concern so, would be how they impact the butters and that kind of thing, but not where they are. So you're saying part B is really targeting the ZBA? Well, part B is saying, well, all of the zoning thing is targeting the ZBA um, or, or the ZBA is the enforcer of the bylaw. We get involved on the planning board in terms of health and safety. You know, is the drainage okay? Mm -hmm. What's the impact on the butters? Um, what about parking and, and is there adequate parking? What's the traffic thing? All of the ancillary things that come out 
above and beyond the zoning, but it's the zoning board who says, okay, I think it's not really a problem if the lot density here is 40% instead of the 30% that's normally in the bylaw. But so you still have to you still yeah. have to do things like provide adequate septic, septic space, adequate well space, adequate parking, good access for a driveway. So so there are real physical constraints. Okay. And and I think then that the planet, the CBA has to go back to what Fred was talking about and think about the, the character of the neighborhood. But I think the way the way this is written, the sentence it's it's conflicting. You you it says you can uh maybe wave, but then it says I'm discouraged. It is it, 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 which is yeah. it? Is it discouraged or not? Set set reducing the setbacks is what's discouraged. Well, it, backs, well, it's got a comment in there. Is, is discouraged apply to dimensional and density limit? No, no. it's a, all do, reducing the size of required setbacks other than zero setback structure is discouraged. The discouraged only refers to reducing the setbacks. Okay, and the other I think comes to mind. What is zero? What are zero setback structures? What would that, that be? Zero setbacks are where you have what? What if it were on one lot? Would be a duplex with two units in side by side, but in this case they straddle the lot line, and it's a way to have a more efficient building and save energy cost and still give people more legal protection than a condominium say for their for their lot ownership. And it's one of the it's one of the affordable housing strategies or energy efficient strategies. So as a comment, Judy, I think we should, since you had to use quite a number of words to explain that, that needs a definition somewhere, either in the bylaws and probably and I'm, not way at the yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a little still confused. And I want to ask if we can take a moment to apply a specific situation to this, which I have in mind to so that you could tell me I'm going to use something, my like, this may not happen, but it, it brings up setbacks and the aquifer district, one of the lots or one of the places we've talked about that we think would be lovely to develop housing is on LaSalle Road, the lot where the house is sort of falling apart. But the, the first house on LaSalle Road, not the second house that's owned by yeah. the, yeah. The site of Quatley's first big pottery. That's right, not that site. We understand that there's some historic significance and that the owner is very fond of no, that house. I'm, so I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, I get it. But um the other house with the lovely um plant infused VW, I I think and I've walked the site because I am there all the time, uh many times and have this sort of dream of there being four small duplexes up near the road to keep them as far back away from the water, like the, the little teeny tiny bit of the Mill River that goes in the way back. Um, now we don't have site control, right? We know in fact recently that the owner's not interested in selling the land to the town, even if we ask nicely. But I think that that would be like, so four or three very small two family like senior one story apartments could all be on a community water and a community like one septic one community well but i think that this b even though it's trying to be more flexible to allow things like that might in multiple ways be prohibiting that so a because currently it's in the water no. the protection I'm district sorry. right the water protection district 
part of it is applies anyway. Yes. And I honestly don't think we can or should try to get a waiver of that in this bylaw because I think it would kill it or might well. Um, and partly, you know, it's partly because it's, it, I don't think 40B would allow building. I don't think you could have a 40B in the aquifer protection district where it would be debatable, highly debatable. Um, the intent of the zero setback provision was yep. I would, what it seems important is to try and protect setbacks from neighbors. Got it. Yeah, more than the street. Like in this case, I was thinking it might have to be a little. Yeah, but it, I, obviously. Was, yeah, but you can't really just say side setbacks because. Yep. Right. You're, you, then you get into um, traffic issues or rear yep. setbacks. You know, our neighbors. Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. Okay. So. So when I went back and looked through the cluster zoning thing. Yeah, I noticed. Oh, yes, there are these zero setback houses. Maybe we should have an exclusion for them here, because you wouldn't want to. I don't know how often they would be done, and the kind of project you're talking about, I think, would be better done as condominiums anyway, or or one project rental units or something, rather than individually owned. Uh, Lots. Well, I wasn't necessarily inferring they'd be individually owned. I just meant separated buildings that yeah. avoids elevator expense and some other things, even setbacks though it increases refer, other, but setbacks aren't internal on the lot. They're they're on the exterior just, of the lot or yeah, the building. Yep. They're not between buildings. There's not any other right. Sorry, I'm not an expert. That's no, why okay, I wanted I, to bring this up to make sure yes. that that type Another, of a situation. Like a cluster, a proper cluster. That's a cluster on a tiny lot, but a proper like cluster development. I mean, as long you know, as there's a, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you say a setback, it's usually it's back, front, and side. If, okay. If I can jump in on the wording, I don't know that that other than zero setback structures is really necessary because the clause doesn't prohibit reducing the setbacks it discourages it which okay. in, okay. you need it can be ignored okay well it certainly raises more questions than yeah. it's worth so, <laughs> so i'm very happy to take it up <laughs> either that or define or explain what like brent was saying more in discussion of what is zero setback structure yeah but yep one or the other i appreciate the attention to detail though judy about it like that yeah, like sort of. I, I, I just don't think thing, it's because but... it 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 doesn't introduce a prohibition that. Okay, I'm uh, let's, specifically let's noting zero setback is needed. All right, so we're thinking we're going to delete this section. Um. Megan, since you're one of our distinguished guests here, do you have would you like to weigh in on this particular bylaw? Um, sure. I just have one question about E. What was the rationale to adding the clause about more than two residents may occupy an accessory apartment? Because that was one of the limits in the in the ADO. In the HPP that you you folks had a problem with. Oh, okay. So I see. Um the way it was, the way it's worded, um, we might want to revisit. Okay. Um, rather than it leaves it open but with a um like it doesn't limit but it doesn't like there's no minimum and there's no maximum. Um so we might want to just think about tweaking the wording to make it clear that it's not required that there's a maximum, which I think the current ADU does allow, does state. All contributions gratefully received. You're speaking to part E, Megan, is that right? Yeah, just let's let's think about the wording and I, I don't have a specific recommendation right now, but I'd have to go back to see what the ADU bylaw is, but I believe it's the ADU bylaw 
caps the number of people. And I think the intention two, of, the two. Yeah. So I think that the intention of this is to kind of remove that cap. But um the way it's worded, I can pretty sure council won't like it because it's a little bit vague. So we'll need to think about retweaking that. Great. Okay. So you're Megan, you're able to after this meeting, consider this and send yep, us a can... recommendation for revised wording of part E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anybody else I haven't given the opportunity to weigh in on this? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to save a copy of this as a, since I made a couple of changes as a rev two. Um, JD, at some point I should somehow set you up so you can access our shared drive and that'll be true for you too, Laura, eventually. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this and I think we'll move on to the next of Judy's proposals. In one second. Well, let's leave it that Megan and I will get together and make some edits and get them to the housing committee before Wednesday. Is that ah perfect? Can can you make that uh, can you make that schedule, Megan? That's fine. Yes. We do now do another screen share. This was in a document improvements to the cluster zoning bylaw. And what I'm going to propose, there, if you'll indulge me, is we'll jump a little bit into the document, focusing on a, a pretty concrete proposal that was suggested by the housing production plan. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the other parts as well, but I wanna have this discussion now. Um, so the housing production plan suggests or pointed out that growth control bylaws such as this one in our zoning bylaws are, have been found unconstitutional and we should strike it from our zoning bylaws, which is a, and I think the, the consensus or, or there is some, some points of view to say that there's a strong argument that says that this, this growth control bylaw can and should be eliminated. And it's a straightforward kind of thing to take to town meeting. So I thought I would open up discussion and maybe again, give either Judy or even perhaps Megan an opportunity to comment on why we might recommend doing this. If Can I, I ask a, a clarifying question? Yeah, go ahead, Monty. Well, if it's unconstitutional, then how can we vote on it at town meeting and vote to keep something in that's unconstitutional? Well, the, the argument is that the presence of it, because it's there, is inhibiting. Um, and that removing it would remove that barrier. Um, we can argue whether that's the case or not, but um, essentially it's just, um, un I think the Right word, better word in, in the situation is unenforceable, um, at least on a local level. And, and so it's, it's like dead space. And, you know, it, it's house, I think you look at it as, if, if one decides to do it, it's housekeeping, it's getting rid of something that the state court system says you can't do. 
Okay, that sounds pretty straightforward to present at town meeting and get approved. Yeah, I mean, if you yeah. put it that way. Yeah, that's why. Now, I for one, I mean, it's this court case happened before I got on the planning board, and I've been on the board for fifteen years. So I think it was two thousand and four or something. Um, it just never seemed worth the trouble to do till we started thinking about well, why aren't we getting any multifamily units? And then you start shaking the weeds, looking through the weeds and seeing what might be in the way. And then this is one that the housing produ production plan suggested. Do any of us know, and maybe Ma Megan could comment as well, like the, the current growth control bylaw, you know, it was, I guess, when it went in, believed and you know passed muster at the attorney general's office at the time so at one point this was considered constitutional and you know, things have changed since 1991 when it was originally adopted um, but for example it says that no more than 10 individual building permits for new dwellings shall be issued in any one calendar year blah 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 what i don't know is if the um, building inspector is able to or would even enforce that, knowing that, like, I'm still in favor of striking something we now believe to be unconstitutional. I'm curious whether the building inspector is obliged to at least attempt to enforce it because it's on our books, or does the building inspector, by virtue of knowing that this is not constitutional would basically ignore it. Do you happen to know the answer to that, Megan? I don't. That's a good question. I I'm not sure. One question for maybe for the board then to go back to you is what happened in the Pine Plains estates? Have how many permits for that have been issued per year? If, it seems to me like that might have been over 10 and was out. No, it never got that many. There's only 40 houses in there, and it, it was never more than 10. There was more, okay. only a couple at a time. Yeah. Well, there weren't there weren't 10 for that, but you're looking at aggregate for the town. Um, I'm not sure it ever it ever happened, but um, that ever got that high. But the East School, I mean, he's applying for 10. He has, a, I think he has the building permit for 10 units. But is that one building permit for 10 units or 10 that's individual building permits? That's one permit. That's one permit. Yeah, that's, that's one permit for 10 units, not 10 yeah. permits. Yeah. Well, this second section deals in multi-unit. It's a very confusing bylaw. I if I were the building inspector, I would feel under no obligation to enforce it at all, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah there is I, a I multiple. Think I think it'd be better if it just wasn't there, <laughs> given that it's unenforceable anyway. Yeah. yeah. Any other comments or questions about eliminating Article 8? I'll say I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm in I'm very supportive of trying to move forward with striking this and getting that done by this year's annual town meeting because it is so straightforward and I think it would be easy to explain, easy to get past, and could be helpful as a way. Um, you might say a political strategy of making town residents who come to town meeting and and or watch the recordings afterwards that um, we're starting to make progress on this housing production plan. And it so certainly I'm, seems like something to lead with if there are mm -hmm. multiple changes, because it does seem not very controversial. Right, like start with something that makes so much sense logically to anyone who gets that one sentence explanation. Yeah. Boom. I think Sarah used the 
phrase with these two proposals last week that they're the low hanging fruit because both of them in essence um, probably hopefully help but um, don't do anything that the state didn't allow people to do anyway. But the uh, DeMaio property that's been uh, discussed lately, isn't one of the proposals or, or those several proposals on how many units to develop and isn't one talking about like 24 individual units? Is that they, part they, they weren't really proposals, Fred. That was just a planning study no. and they offered as part of the study some suggestions for what you might want to do with the property. None of that was at all a proposal. Right, but but if a developer gets a hold of that and says, okay, I think that sounds like a good option to go 24 units there. Do we have any control over that, whether that's allowable or not to build that many there? At the moment, under unless it's a 40B, the current zoning limits that lot to seven units. There was the whoever prepared that proposal misread the zoning. Okay. Or or didn't read it or, at all. I think they I think whoever <laughs> that may be true, Fred. I think the group that prepared the did the house the study on the parcel assumed that it would be. A 40B proposal, regardless, because the idea was it would be an affordable housing proposal, and they just threw three different well, layouts actually, at us. Right. The wording that they used was that because it's in the commercial district, commercial zoning rules applied. And our zoning, the rules are written by the use, you know, where you can build where. Where the district allows, but then when you go to the to what zoning particular zoning applies to the actual project, it's the use zoning that mm -hmm. applies, and they never looked at the multifamily zoning. Mm. As I said, I think there are lots of things they didn't look at. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, I'm about ready to move off of this. The one thing I might say as supportive as I am about striking Article 8, is that I could imagine, e even after the case is made, that it's unconstitutional and shouldn't be left in the books, that given that the description of it is basically about limiting growth, I could well imagine residents saying, well, we like that idea. We do want to limit growth, and, uh, and uh, we'd rather... <laughs> leave of something we believe is unenforceable on the books. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I think it could be, I don't necessarily assume that people would be just fine with striking something that well, purports to limit growth in the town. Of I, I think the argument is that it doesn't limit growth because it's unenforceable. Yeah, I know. But these votes so are not always entirely do rational, right? Right. I, I expect it would carry, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was some some pushback for whatever reason. But that's not an argument for not moving forward with it. Okay. okay but I don't know how long ago this provision the, in a bylaw was, was established, but before even Pine Plains, says, before Pine Plains Estates was uh, developed, there has been proposals in town to build apartments, multifamily units, that have been shot down by the residents. I don't know why, because of zoning or whatever. People just didn't want apartments. So there's been that that issue in the town for a number of years. I don't think any of the members on the committee today were aware of that. That that is in the past that that has happened, and there's large enough parcels that could develop that way today. There's parcels still available, and developers are, are looking. Uh, we see some being divided already. Uh, just as my thoughts, and, and the people that maybe didn't want, they wanted to control the number, not single family, but multi-units, family units, wanted some uh, provision in the bylaw to, to be able to control that. Fred, I think it's reasonable to assume that any developer capable of building a, a large complex knows that this isn't enforceable. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I don't it's, know. It's, it's it's 
very well known court case. And we're still ultimately limited by availability of water and sewer or lack of sewer and need for septic and so forth. So, okay, so I'm going to move off of this. And um, so I'd like to get back to the first part of this. It seemed to me, Judy, that the, um, the first one we talked about, the community housing was, you know, fairly well drafted, had an initial draft with respect to striking Article 8 on growth control. That's a very cut and dried proposal, easy to implement. And then these other parts of this document on improvements to the cluster zoning bylaw strike me as a little, as still sort of ideas works in progress. Is that right? Versus we don't really have well, draft. It, it's uh, well, the removing removing the growth bylaw is one of those, and the other is changes to the subdivision regs, and that's something we can deal with after town meeting because it doesn't have to go to town meeting, so we don't need to deal with that now. So are we? So what would you like to do next, Judy? Or would do we want to discuss this cluster zoning bylaw material or what would we, be I think we have just discussed this cluster. The, the two things that were going to possibly help with the cluster bylaw that that I had proposed were removing the the growth bylaw and then dealing with the subdivision regs. I see, okay. Period. Okay, that, that was not clear to me in this document. All right. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. So um, we have more time. It sounds like we'd like to continue working on the community housing bylaw proposal. Megan's going to get some feedback. We've taken some comments here tonight. We don't, I don't think we have anything yet to have a motion or vote on. Um, though, I mean, I suppose we could potentially have a motion and vote on um, striking Article 8, the growth control bylaw, or we can sit on that and postpone a vote till another meeting, since we, again, have more time. Does, does that require a public hearing as well? Uh, it will eventually, but we'd have to approve it. Okay. First. Yeah. yeah. I guess I I have a concern, Look, looking back at what we discussed, the, the first uh, community housing proposal, uh, the new section we're adding, we, we emphasize a couple of times in here, affordable housing. Does this only apply to affordable housing or does it apply to all housing in Whateley? Uh, I, I see, you know, even the first sentence talks about affordable housing. We want to increase all housing, just not affordable housing. And I don't know what the word, well, you define affordable under paragraph A by meaning state requirements. Some people look at it that way and others look at well, affordable is uh, any house less than say 300,000 now in Waitley is, a, is affordable to the residents. To me, that's, we're, we're, we're mixing two affordables, however we define it with trying to increase housing in general in Waitley. I see this as a little confusion in here and people may interpret it that way, I don't know. If somebody else made a comment on affordable, you bring it up at a town meeting and people are going to say, is that low income or slum lords or uh, I, I don't know, the uh, minority housing, whatever, What what is affordable? You do define it, yeah, in, in A, but... Brad, this was defined. This is... I see some confusion here, people saying... Fred would working here on things that we thought hopefully we could get through town meeting this year on a very short time schedule. 
and this community housing bylaw was crafted very tightly to replicate the 40B regulations. Wow. So, so it it does what you could already do with a 40B and gives the town site plan control and and requires a special permit. I, I think it all. would just. Can I add something? Yeah. Please, Monty. I'll try to <laughs> enforce my moderator responsibility. <laughs> well, I just think it at town meeting it's really important to explain it the way it was explained to me that if we if we um, don't take um, proactive steps to control this ourselves, then a developer can come in and do what they want in the town because we are not, we don't have as much affordable housing as we're required to have. So it's not a question of, do we want affordable housing or not? It's, do we want to be able to control how it's developed or do we want a developer yeah. from outside to be able to come in and have all the rules waived for them? You could explain it at town meeting. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to do that, but I think it's really important for people to understand that. Like, what I'm glad you said that, Monty, in the way that you did, because I always forget about I'm five steps ahead when I'm thinking about it. And I'm already thinking about like a slide that I want to do about Franklin Waitley's like how high the income for a family of four is for the AMI is 98,000 or 94,000. Anyway. I have in my head like a thing, but you're right. That's the absolute first thing that should be discussed when this comes on the table before anyone takes any comments. Like if we actually get there, that is a hundred percent. We need to get the speech about uh, the 40B and why 10% how 10% affordable housing is required at every community in the state, blah, blah, blah. I'll need help with that because I wasn't all that great. <laughs> but no, you're a hundred percent. You don't even have to go into why. I mean, just yeah, just they can, right. They let you. Yeah, I can. I their, can be the yeah. lay person. <laughs> I, I know Very Megan. Sure it's understandable to me. I know Megan can comment also in response to Fred. I'll make a comment, Fred. That the way I see this community housing proposal is that it is about increasing all housing understand this idea of saying, we're going to allow, make certain, um, we're going to relax or waive certain zoning provisions in the interest of enc encouraging development of multi-unit housing, multi-unit housing on a parcel of land with some restrictions such that a quarter at least a quarter of those new housing units are permanently restricted to people who meet the definition of um, uh, um, eligible for low income housing. So it is affordable in that sense. And yes, wait, I isn't low income different from affordable? I know those two are defined differently. Yeah, they're defined uh, differently. Know. But they used interchangeably. So, Megan, because this we know this is this the this phrase, this topic can touch some nerves. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure Megan gives the clear definition of this, but I but I just want to say the idea is in order to encourage development that will generally increase the stock of housing in Waitley, but at the same time contribute to increasing the stock of housing in Waitley that is specifically restricted for to meet the needs of affordable housing per this definition that Megan will give you. We're going to allow, we're going to waive certain um, restrictions to make that possible. So we increase housing, but we at market rates as well as uh, at affordable housing rates. So I'll let, and I, I know I'm messing up that. So Megan, please like, Help me get that right. Yeah, I, sure. I, so I I'll that, do my best. What, that, that sounds good, but I, I think that some of that needs to be explained better in the opening paragraph, what you're doing rather than what's okay, affordable. This is, a, this this is was, for us. This is this not is for a town meeting. This, for this was to get us ready for tonight. 
Yeah. We absolutely yeah. would put a lot of effort into how things would get framed for town meeting. And Megan will absolutely bless a hundred percent of the information and maybe even coach those of us who are going to be tasked with using our yeah. own minds to try to respond to angry people. <laughs> right. It, it's a standard problem in towns differentiating between affordable and low income yeah. housing. People yeah. you say affordable and people hear low income and they are right. not the same thing. And right. we need to make that clear. Right. Megan. Right. So right. as what I was going to say is the argument for this is exactly what Monty and Judy said is that it's, it's the alternative to chapter 40B that gives the town control. And I think that's the argument that you definitely going to have to make. I was thinking also kind of along what Fred was just saying was tweaking that first paragraph, the purpose of not necessarily to increase the quantity of affordable housing, like making that the opening statement, but more of like diversifying your housing stock or or some talking about it, making multiple income levels, um, housing available to many different income levels. Um, and then what we will need to do specify is that the only way that this bylaw though can be used is if 25% of the units, and they don't have, I don't, my interpretation does not have to be multi-unit brand. It, it could be single family, just needs to be, um, it, or it could single be, families, at least. Yeah, it could be done a variety of ways, but for whatever development it is, 25% of those units have to meet um, a, a minimum of, um, yeah, they yeah. Have to meet a, a minimum of 25%, yes, has to be affordable to people of a certain income levels. And those um, go all the way up to 60%, I believe, of the area median income, which we can then, we can translate that into mm -hmm. the high 120%. It's 80, 80%. so area medium, yeah. And we can even do, for some of the units, 100% of area median income. Yeah. But that doesn't go on the SHI, right? To get it on the a subsidized house, blah, blah, housing eight. inventory, it has to be 80. And so those are technical numbers that even we, don't, like, I don't know right. what does that mean. Well, we wouldn't, your, the job at town meeting would be to translate that. What does an 80% mean income look like for Wadley? It's a teacher. It's a firefighter. It's right. It's your people that you are already in town. It's your low, it's your, you know, senior who's retired on fixed income, um, things like that. Those are the cases we'll have to make. Um, but in typically in 40B development, 20, it's a minimum of 25%, but usually it's not a whole lot more than that because to make the numbers work, you have to have quite a bit of a, of the market rate housing. So this really would and provide it, a diverse housing stock, not just- It might actually incentivize a developer. Like my brain, the whole time I've been on the housing committee has been assuming a development that we do as a committee, like working with RDI or, you know, I don't, we don't have very many other options, but- would be something that was a hundred percent like it would be 12 units and maybe maybe 11 or 12 of them they would all be affordable like that's my my because that's the way you can also get all there's no funding if we don't do that right no state subsidies if we don't get to those higher numbers but it does maybe make some changes to that um which is super but you can get CPA money. We can get CPA money, absolutely. With sure. with the twenty five with. Yes, Judy, but but CPA money isn't okay. enough we're, to we're fund. Into, yeah, we're right. Into it's too many it, technicalities. Yeah, okay. yeah. Can I real quickly um, talk about um, the town's thoughts on affordable housing. So I I had mentioned in the email. Uh, so I'm working with. Um, Sylvie and some others in town on a comprehensive plan. I'm doing, I, you might have all gotten surveys in the mail um, about uh, all of the, the town. And there are a couple of housing questions on there. And as we were developing the survey, I heard from a couple of people in town that they didn't like the word affordable because it connotes, yep, they are bad things. Rip, rip rap is the word I heard. And I was like, ah, oh, how are we going to ever make change? So the survey went out. Um, we've already gotten 65 responses. And do you mind if I share the screen? Let's That's see. exciting. Go ahead, please. Okay. So um, 
It's loading, 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 it says. Um, well, while that's loading, um, I'll tell, okay. So let me make this a little bit bigger. So, so far what we've gotten, uh, where'd it go? I was really surprised and pleased to see that, oh my gosh, my picture, okay. Um, 27% of the respondents so far said they would strongly support apartments being added to existing homes. 25% said they'd strongly support new housing styles, such as townhomes, duplexes, or smaller cottages. Similarly, a quarter of the respondents said mixed-use buildings are good, and that 20% said they support multifamily along State Road. Um, alternatively, for those people would strongly oppose high-end housing, which means that they would I guess the inverse will be true, but maybe not necessarily, but at least there's the acknowledgement that we don't need any more high-end housing. Um, and that, but although at the same time, people are not thrilled with the idea of more big scale subdivisions that take up lots of land. But, and um, so let's see, that was question seven. Question mm -hmm. six, um, over a third of the respondents says that housing should be affordable for those in the workforce, which is like 80% <laughs> of the area median income. Um, so I, I, I was pleased with this. I, I was not, um, expecting to see such support. Maybe it's not overwhelming support, but it's more than I thought I would see. Uh, JD. Megan, what's yes. your definition of, what's your definition of high-end housing? Um, so we didn't define it. Um, my definition would be people, I mean, you know, six, it depends, it depends on every town, but you know, like a four bedroom, nice house that's <coughs> probably 500,000 and over. Okay. So there's a adorable little house on Hayville Road right now that um, Brennan Monahan just built, 540. Yeah. I mean, and that's a thousand I, square foot house two bedrooms and a postage stamp lot, 540. Is that high-end housing? So, and that's why I didn't want to, to yeah, we'll, we'll see. We, we need to define it. And Prices I are... talked to him today and he said he might make a few grand on it, but it cost him a fortune to do it. Hmm. Yeah. In my, the houses that we build in the Gray Oak Lane subdivision start in the sevens for modest houses. That's before they've paid for the land. And that's not high-end housing. We're talking 2,200 square foot, three bedroom houses with two car garage and a porch and deck. And we're not making a killing at it. So people may be receptive to some change. I don't think people understand what it costs to build right now. That are against high-end housing. That's the, I guess that's the point I'm making. Okay. Um... Are there other topics related to, are there other things about, r related to our housing discussion at our joint meeting that have, need to come up tonight? I think we have a, well, I did pose the question with regard to Article 8, do we want to move and vote on, take a position on that tonight or postpone that? discussion for another meeting. What's the sense of the planning board? Sarah, where are you sort of sitting on? Brent, it, Brent it, if I can suggest you try to put together a schedule for when things will need to be done, to, you know, to get it and work backwards from town meeting and yeah. just say, okay, we need to have this meeting by then and to know well, whether you head, want to do it tonight Fred, or not. In my head, I'm thinking that we'll have a public hearing at the same date and time as the regularly scheduled planning board meeting in March. That's my notional target. Rather Just the than last Wednesday. Was that? The last Wednesday of March. So what I'd like to do. You do have is, to have two weeks prior to the public hearing of notice yes that's right you know, so that we would have the 
regular planning board meeting at the end of February as one more. So the date of that, February 28th, is the next regularly scheduled planning board meeting. So we would have another discussion and potentially vote. Maybe we could just put all of this off until then. We'll have hopefully a new draft of the community housing bylaw for us to consider and decide and vote on whether to bring it to a public hearing. And we could also wait until the 28th of February to have a discussion, a, a, one more discussion and vote about Article 8. I don't think there is anything else concrete that um, we have on the table that could possibly be ready for discussion and vote on the 28th related to housing. And so a public hearing on March 27th, last Wednesday of March, we would have a, pu we would have a public hearing or public hearings. Do we do, Judy, is it one public hearing per revision or is it one public hearing for all the revisions that we're we're seeking in public input on? The latter. The latter. Okay. So we'd have a public hearing where we would address the new zoning map for the aquifer protection overlay district and the associated bylaw changes, and then any housing related bylaw changes. So that would be the public hearing on the 27th. And we don't need, we would have whatever votes we would have at the planning board on March 27th. Um, and then we could forward draft up our recommendations and get those. I mean, I guess we could potentially finish any last business after the public hearing on the planning board meeting on April 24th before, if we needed a public meeting regarding anything we're sending over to the plan, uh, to the select board, unless we can get that all done on the same night of the public hearing in March. What's that, what's our typical business process, Judy? We do the public hearing for bylaw revisions and then we, outside of a meeting, prepare our letter to the select board? Yeah, the letter to the select board is essentially just, here it is, but um, but actually it, at some point in there, it needs to go to town council. Okay. So you think that if we do the public hearing on the 27th of March, we can get all of this done so we have all of april all of may to get things through town council to the select board and so forth well no you, you don't have all you've got half of may yeah. because you've got two weeks notice right of the warrant yeah. and got town council i would figure that the select board would want to work on this at its april 30th meeting okay that if you if you've got a March twenty seventh meeting, I can't assume the town council will have finished it in time for an April 9th meeting. Okay. So we're looking at April thirtieth because May the select board considering it at May fourteenth, which is its first May meeting, is running very close Wait. to right. the notice period. Okay, so this is a feasible schedule. Public hearing by March 27th. Okay. And, and, and assuming action on, on it on that same day. Yeah, I think we could probably, we could probably do that. All right, then I think I'm going mean, to- Sorry, that does mean that the bylaw, since it has to go off for public, public notice two weeks prior to the public hearing, the bylaw pretty much needs to be done, draft, being drafted, no more tweaks. You'd have to put 
all changes will be done two weeks prior to the March 27th date. Yeah. That's right. right. So we finalize it on February 28th at the regular public meeting. So next month, and then um, make any tweaks quickly and do the posting for the March 27th public hearing. Still, a, yeah, maybe a little, we got a little breathing room, but not a whole lot. Feels well, so I much better to me. We've kept the housing. If the housing committee doesn't have anything more to, I was just going to we, say, we like, I'll just, yeah, maybe. Right. And and the plan for the housing committee would be to discuss some of this. We have other business as well for the February seventh meeting. Maybe one of these two things we'll choose to vote then, and then otherwise our next the March meeting for us would be March sixth. So it's fairly early. It gives a little bit of time, you know, it's one, two, it's three weeks to the day before the March meeting and would give a week before the posting of the final regulation. So if we had any like last minute tweaks, it would be a little bit hairy, but I'll make a note to myself right now that. But I, I think we Thursday can discuss it next week's seven. meeting and yeah. put it behind us yeah. then. What okay. I might request for the housing committee so ideally, housing the housing committee would vote to endorse any housing related bylaw changes considered by the planning board. Right. So that that would be done either, well, you know, in advance or at the same time. So one thing you they might can, consider, they can endorse it afterwards if they want to get input. Yeah, we need to do it ahead of time. We need to do yeah, it ahead. That's of time. right. That's well, right. well, no, we can do it ahead of time as a group or individually at the public hearing. Yep. Yes, that's right. But it it needs to be it needs to be a joint, you know, planning board housing committee thing. The I might ask the housing committee to consider at their next meeting um, a discussion and vote on striking Article Eight. The growth control bylaw, because it's so simple and straightforward and you could like get that done. And we have that as a recommendation. The problem with that is, Grant, that's the one that's going to be more complex on our end too. If they're going to deal with one, only one, I, I think Fred has said you could probably deal with both, but if you can only deal with one, do the community housing one first. All right there. All right. It's, okay. Assuming that Megan is comfortable getting the introductory wording but okay and i'm gonna i intend to follow up with megan anyway we i've had her tell her five times i'm gonna call her but i was working the last three days so tomorrow I'm not working uh yeah well is this it then for the housing committee i think i'd be i think I think from the planning board perspective, unless there's any other comments or so forth, we have a half an hour left in our regular meeting. I'd be prepared to close the, the housing portion of the planning board agenda and move on to other planning boarded items. And then thus the housing committee could adjourn their joint meeting and depart or stay with, if you want with, to enjoy with that. Thanks for yeah. your attention. Yes. Yeah, well, thank I'm you glad for all the work out. that you've done in this. Yes, thank you for your work. Okay. Right. Absolutely. We, we, we are, well, we were never really a meeting. We were. <laughs> right. Well, but we, Catherine, we did the call housing the housing committee, committee to order. I did. So, should, so housing okay. committee, so, we can adjourn. I'll, I'll, I'll move we adjourn the housing committee. All right. Great. I'll second that. Okay. And, and the housing committee will bring both of these up. I hope okay. we'll have time next week. I don't know what actions we'll get to or not get to, but I think we'll absolutely be discussing them next week and we'll update you right. appropriately. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good Good thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. All right. All right. So the next item of business is approval of minutes. Uh, so 
we have the October 23rd meeting minutes. Um, so Mary got that out earlier. Um, I've shortened it. Maybe what I'll do is just bring up the, I'll do a share screen of the meeting minutes. Give me one second here to get that going. That share the screen. Thanks for bearing with me all. Uh, yeah. All right. So I said uh, I mostly did. So I apologize that the way I edited this, I ended up summarizing <laughs> down without doing the track changes, but. Um, so I just like to look look over this. This I just basically shorten the minutes, capturing the highlights and the votes. The main thing there was that we all voted unanimously to waive the um, site review for the T guys property at 110 Christian Lane. Um, Excuse me. Are are you saying that what's there now? is the shortened version? Yes, what's no, okay. here is the shortened version. Okay. Um, and let me just turn track changes to a simple markup. Well, I don't know. And then I did a similar summary of the discussion with Sophie. Uh, Am I? I'm so sorry, I'm having a moment. Her last name is Jensen. Did I make a mistake there or is there? Is but her Sylvie. first name is Sylvie, isn't it? Sylvie. Sylvie. Yeah. So that oh, was, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I started off with Sylvie or I don't know. I, I, I know it's Sylvie. I don't, yeah. my brain went to Sophie for some reason. There we are. Fix that. Okay. And Sylvie was, it was correct at least one place. All right. Yeah, so this is just a discussion. Some meetings were suggested. And if I if you need me to go back, I didn't. I decided it looked to me like the AG discussion was pretty much fine. I think I made Mary left wasn't sure of some part of it, and basically the summary was that I sent a new map to Judy. And she was going to update the planning board page on the town website. Uh, I'll send you this, Mary, after we're done. And I did send the corrected. And there, and this is, I deleted that bullet about working with Jessica Murphy is not necessary in the minutes. Um, then I did a, I did. There's a different version of that. My summary was maybe not necessarily any shorter than the original version, so captured the key ideas. And then I just summarized a bit about the recognition of Peggy Sloan. Um, I will say, by the way, that this has been an for the recognition of Peggy Sloan, Don Sluter, and Tom Litwin has been an outstanding action in my plate, and I haven't forgotten about it. Um, I've got the uh, drafts, the draft certificates ready to go. I'll circulate them to all of you, and then I just need to um, get my wife's attention to actually turn them all into nice. Um, nice frame certificates that we can then get to the respective individuals. Um, Judy, do you happen to, well, off, off this message, we'll, off this meeting, we'll, I'll make sure we know people's locations. So if we have to deliver things in person, I can, I can track them down. Um, 
There were really no other changes. We captured the approval of the minutes. So that was it. Any comments or questions or other changes to the minutes? Or I can hear a motion to approve. Yeah, it's trivial, but one change I had, it was the very last item that listing the, the bylaws as a other document on file with the planning board. Um, I don't think oh. that's necessary. Um, we don't need no. that, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, we can delete this. Yeah, just delete. Okay. Okay. So I'll save that. All right. Do On I the uh, line were from minutes of September 27th, 2023. I believe instead of grand, it should say Brandt. Um, I'm sorry. Keep Where? going. Okay, right there. Judy, Tom, Sarah, and Grand. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. Missed that one. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Good eye. Good eye. Many, you know, many eyes make. Did you get done out of the attendees? Uh, he was listed as not attending. Yeah, he. Well, he's not. He was no longer he's a member. Not a member anymore. <laughs> um, he should I be deleted. Guess so he, he resigned be... prior to the meeting. The so. minutes show that you were elected chair. So I think if if he's still a member, that's an awkward thing. Okay, so I'll, we'll just delete that. Okay. Anything else? Judy, are, 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 you had some other tweaks that you emailed. Are they incorporated in this or should we be voting on your, your edits Ignore separately? Mine. Ignore mine. Ignore it and just go with this as yep. it is. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for asking. I move that we accept the uh, October 23rd, 2023 minutes as amended. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Roll call. Uh, JD. I wasn't a member of the board when this happened. You're right. <laughs> so you can, you don't, you don't get a vote. Uh, Sarah. You made the yes. motion, so I guess you're approving it. Judy? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So the, it carries unanimously by the three relevant members. I mean, I, I guess technically, JD, you can abstain. You're I'll a abstain. voting member, right? So you're you're just abstaining on a met meeting you are not a participant in. Okay. Correct. Very yep. good. Very good. So I'm going to stop sharing. All right, and I will get this uh, revised document to you, Mary. So last, just as we wrap up for the evening, and just a couple of other things. Um, I want to say, first of all, uh, just public that um, Laura Ross, who's been following tonight's meeting invisibly off camera, um, is, I believe, on course to join the board as our fifth member. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. We've, I've connected her with Nat Fortune, who's going to work on the on the paperwork. Um, this is for both you, JD, and Laura. I and have she, one. You did get your physical. Oh, because there's one left. The Maybe town clerk gave it to me when I got sworn in. Awesome. All right. Well, Who's so heads up, Laura. When you get sworn in, get your own personal copy. And the subdivision regs too. Was that? And the subdivision, the subdivision regs as well. Yep, I got them both. Okay, awesome. Good, you know, nighttime reading. Keep them under your pillow. Um, I wanna. So I had asked after our if last. They, Grant, I just have a quick question. Is the what's online the exact same as that document that you held up with a green cover? Yes. Theoretically. Theoretically. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
if you don't want paper. I, but I, I want to make sure it's the most current online, that's all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do sometimes find it very helpful to have paper, even though I'm basically a digital person. Um, second, after our last meeting where JD shared a lot of useful information, I asked him if he would be willing and able, busy guy, to kind of collect his thoughts about housing and bylaw changes and so forth and put that in a document, which he did and circulated to me just like I think today or yesterday. I just got a chance to look at it. Um, and so I'm going to ask JD, I thought it was very, <laughs> very valuable. Okay. And I'd ask JD to just circulate that document to the other members of the planning board. Okay. Just to see. So I'll sure. just leave it at that. And then you can all, I don't think we're going to have a you know, look for that from JD, and then that might come up for discussion at our next meeting. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything, any other, are there any additional items not anticipated? I can't think of any. Brent, um, has there been a response from Simmers yet? Have they received their letter and have they chimed in yet or not? I've, we've sent the letter. There's okay. been, to my knowledge, there's been no response. And okay. I was just, I just looked at the planning board mailbox a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know that we asked for a response. Would would you necessarily expect one, Judy? No. Okay. I would I, think I, it'd be in their best interest to respond now and pursue what they want to do while it's their off season, they have the time to do it. It's just me. Well, they don't necessarily need to go through us. No. Yeah. Right, you make it, yeah. Apply for their special permit for a restaurant, basically. Yeah. Um, I'll say maybe one other thing just about the aquifer protection bylaw. I've continued to just try to investigate, following up on Brian Domina's question about how would a property owner determine where in their parcel the boundaries of the aquifer protection district lie. Um, I'm just trying to understand that. I've, I've been having some good conversations or some conversations with the water department is just trying to get documentation on how the original water departments overlay, you know, protection boundaries were established, what the process was. I'd like to have some other documentation on hand than just the map that they gave us. Um, I still think that the zoning map, the latest revised zoning map is our best available revised map, eliminating the protections associated solely with the water district. Um, and maybe I should let these sleeping dogs lie, but I'm continuing to investigate. No other, no other news to share just yet. Brian, I, I have a piece. Um, you guys asked me to represent the board on the committee for the potential sale of the center school. Yes. So I, I attended the meeting and there's a lot of very diverse opinions. We got two proposals for the building. One was from a pair of architects from Boston that want to pay $4,800 or so for the building. They don't list a contractor. They want to use 100% CPA funds to fix the exterior of the building. And then they don't know what they're going to do with the inside of it. And then they got a proposal from Mr. O'Bear who bought the blue school. He wants to pay $1,000 for it. And he wants to turn it into a single family residence. Um, there was a lot of holes in both of their proposals. And instead of making a decision, Brian thought initially we had 30 days to respond, but I guess we had 60 or 90 days to respond. We decided as a group not to vote, but to interview them with some questions. We all compiled our questions, which we submitted to them based on our expertise. So I submitted building questions. Um, Paul Newland had some questions. I'm not sure who the other people were, but everyone gave their questions to Brian. Brian's compiling them. He was working on that today. 
We're putting it out to these folks to answer our questions. And it's quite possible we might reject all the bids. We might, well, we, as a committee, we can't reject. We can just make a recommendation to the, the select board. But neither of the proposals were truly stimulating. Um, we'll see what comes back from their questions, their responses to their questions. Okay. That's what I have. Thank you. Thank you. That reminded me of this other thing. I'm a member of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. I'm not entirely, it's, my status there is a little lost in the mists of my memory as to whether I'm there as just a Waitley citizen or as a- Oh, you're the planning board. You're the planning okay. board. Okay. Then thank you for that reminder. Um, the CIPC has had its has has met twice. We're very efficient, and we've reviewed and prioritized a number of capital improvement product projects. I shouldn't be spending a lot of time tonight going over that with you, but maybe what I should do is simply after this meeting circulate an email to all of you um, with. The, the memo that laid out what the proposals were. I, I don't want to overload you with information, but, um, and I'd be happy to take Q&A by email afterwards, but I'll give you the, the summary of the projects and what the, um, the CIPC voted to, um, what our prioritizations were. I'll say that I didn't, I didn't note any you know, planning board related issues in any of these, but I'll, but if, if I've overlooked that, I'm sure I'll get some feedback to that effect. So look for an email from me about that. So it's 649. Um, if there's no other business, some kind soul could make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Our next meeting will be, as we just talked about, the last Wednesday of February. That's the 28th. And uh, hopefully Laura will be joining us in an official capacity and we'll have a full robust board again. I'll be on vacation the week prior in Florida, FYI. Okay, but you'll be- I'll have email. I'll okay. have email, but I'll be on vacation. Yep. All right. Laura, you don't seem to look too terrified after tonight's <laughs> meeting. To be in doing this officially. So we look forward to welcoming you. I'm not sure if I'll be able to attend the March 27th <clears throat> meeting. We'll see how I am. And that would be the public hearing. And we could yes, I'm having able... surgery on the 20th, so I'm oh, not yeah. sure what recovery will be. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll certainly have a quorum at it seems by then. So yes, that'll be good. Worry. Laura's going to be with us. Prioritize your own health. Great. All right. We are adjourned. The meeting's over. We'll see you Thank all you. in a month. Thank you. Hey, Carol. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.